Okay, hopefully this is going to help you uh, solve some sort of problem. Um, I'm an Affinity Designer and I pulled in a PDF. However, I didn't have some of the fonts, so when it came in, some of the fonts were, if I click here on Join Us, I dragged this off the, the artboard. You can see it says the bus, new, bold, and a question mark, which means this font isn't here. So I can go and find the font, uh, install it, and you know, if for a way we can do it in that way. But in some cases, you might have a font that comes in so you have the benefit of having the structure. So if I click here, I can still change. So if I want to change these two, I can still. So I'm not losing the fact of having access to this particular font area. I think that's something that Affinity Designer does uh, on its own. It kind of contains it within here, but it doesn't give you the full font library. Uh, the challenge with this is here, I don't have the ability to choose uh, the font style whether it's a bold or italic uh, if i go here let's see this bold okay you see italic i don't have the ability to underline works but italic and bold these two don't work because i don't have the whole font family installed so a way of getting around um, i'm not sure about italic I could think of a way of doing something there, but um, the way of getting around to create at least bold on a text. Now, this might happen if you bring in a font and the font does not have a bold. It's just got a standard, which happens on quite a few fonts. So it's got a regular or thin, but doesn't have bold. So one way to get around that would be like if I want to say uh, there will not be a presentation. So I want to emphasize the not. I can select that. And yes, the thing we'd go to we'd go to stroke okay uh, but before we go to stroke um, yeah let's just go to stroke I'm gonna pull this down to usually where the settings are it's usually like uh, you know zero and one or point one and two of a mitre and I explain what mitre is um, so if I select this here now I go to color and I am going to drop in a Color, which is the same color as the text here. I'm going to drop in white here. So if I click on there and just drag this down to white. So if you see, if I put it on red, you'll see what I'm, I'm dropping in. So if we zoom in, you can see already it's, it represents some sort of thickness. So if I go to the stroke, you can see we have it there. So if I put this on zero, it will look like the other letters. So here already, if I go now and I say two, it's going to make it this, but you notice that the, the edges, which is referred to as the mitre, is sort of cut in that area. And I've done some other tutorials explaining about the mitre, but I just recommend go either four or five. My standard is five, and then it will sharpen these edges. Okay, so there you get it nice and sharp. And then I usually also just have generally for text and objects, scale with objects. So when you scale it, it, it goes proportion. You don't find text objects staying sort of small or out of proportion. Okay, but for this purpose now, we've created it bold. And another thing just to look out for, if you don't want to go too high, if I go five, you're going to see it's probably, you know, it starts to override itself there. So we just want a little bit of boldness, which two would be able to give us that kind of sense. And then if you go to the color area, yeah, make sure it's the exact color because sometimes you might be zoomed out and it looks the same but it, it might be a different tone and when you look closer you you see this edge here the other thing about the stroke that is important is if you look at a line here yeah? the align stroke to center which means that if the center line is going up like the in here yeah, it's going to fatten the area or thicken the stroke towards the outside and inside if you look at the first one is align the stroke there if we do this, it's going to position it on the line and fatten it only in one direction. And here is the flip side of it. Okay, if you understand that, a line stroke to outside, a line stroke to inside. So we see what effect it has. Let me click here. Okay, so in this case here, it's taking the stroke and putting it over the existing stroke. So you're not seeing much. Unless I increase this, then you're going to start seeing it probably come into being. Okay, it's not even showing up there. So. Okay, that's not helping me. 
in my explanation, but this one would probably create a, a different area. So if we look and we pull this a bit back, you can see zero will take it there. The other one will take it right up to distortion here. So if I put it on here, it probably will just bring it back to normal. So this one would thicken out both ways. Okay, so I would go that onto two. And that's how I'd thicken the actual text. Okay, so remember if it has the ability to add bold, which this one doesn't if we go to wall, click B, nothing happens, click I, nothing happens, U will still happen because all it does, it drops in an independent line there. In that case, we go with this kind of methodology. While I'm at it, I'm going to maybe think of how we can work around doing italic. Um, one's probably going to do something on this level, now I'm going to have to, for those of you as old as I am, you probably know when I say I've got a MacGyver something. I'm going to try this, I'm going to just go Control V. So I've copied that and Control V. So in this case here, now I can hover over here and do maybe a little bit of see this is kind of drag in this area and you you can slide it over and maybe that will create a little bit there but then you'll have to fill in the spot here and um, in this case what one would do is go in here and possibly delete that um, and just create a space uh, drag that over there okay we probably need a little bit more space okay, there's a bit of a primitive way but that's if you're desperate to have the italics in there and then of course with the italics you could also do the same principle here where you can thicken stuff etc so if you're stuck with not having italics or having uh, boldness in a font that you imported or just a font you are using this is probably a good workaround for this and as you notice here you'll see the edges are kind of rounding off that's because of the mitre if you watch closely there it's rounded if I go for five, you'll see it will sharpen nicely. Okay, which is what the fonts are usually. If the font is a rounded font at the end, then you've got to kind of do a few more other adjustments. But pretty much this would be the workaround for italic and for bold on fonts that you don't have access to. Great stuff. Hopefully this helps you when you're in a bit of a pickle. Um, for me, that's what it helped me with just the bold. I didn't need this italic story. So have a fantastic day and shalom.